when I was younger, I started working with materials at a very young age. I worked, I started working, believe it or not, with sand and shells. My family was guests with my aunt and uncle on this big house on a little island off Connecticut shore every summer. So there were 11 kids trapped on this island with four adults. It was like a quarter mile from the shore. So you could swim over, but you know, you had to get a boat to go over at night and try, you know. So um, I grew up with no electricity, no running water all summer and just out in the elements, clamming every day. I would, I would, during the week, I would find, I would collect a bushel of skimmers of sea clams and, and my father would show up on Friday and we'd take them to the market and I'd get $5 for a bushel of clams. And so I was always making uh, Christmas presents for everyone, handmade Christmas presents. Halloween was a big thing. I made, you know, these elaborate costumes, uh, Zorro one year. And one year I was a, a Winston box of cigarettes. Um, and so I was always considered to be the artist in the family. But, you know, my family, it's hard to imagine in this at this time we're in, but no one ever asked me or anybody, like, what are you going to do when you grow up? It was never part of the conversation. All my father said is be happy. And all my mother said was just get your college degree, go to college. And then that's, that's it. You're gone. That was it. There was no conversation. So I, um, I made a lot, like I said, I made a lot of artwork, um, growing up. And then I, you know, I went to a Catholic college, Jesuit college, Fairfield University. And uh, that was actually, now that I look back, an incredible education because there were no electives. You know, I majored in English literature and you had to have, you have to major, sub-major in um, theology and philosophy. So, you know, it opened a lot of a lot of doors and a lot of ideas. Um, and then I had one, I did take one painting class. That was the only, I think, selective I had out of a whim. I don't, you know, I never thought anything about it afterwards. Um, and then, you know, it was also during the Vietnam War and I was protesting the war. And of course I had my deferment from the draft. And uh, I think in right at the year I graduated in 1969, they did a lottery. And, you know, the top numbers of, you know, you'd have a number for your birth date. And luckily, my number was 300 and something. So I never had to get drafted. 